going on people figured i haven't reviewed an anime in a while and i've actually been watching animes uh, a few of them i just haven't gotten around to reviewing any so uh i guess i'll review the last one that i actually watched uh which is fate zero uh to get into it i haven't i didn't know anything really much at all about this anime before i watched it I was just browsing through Netflix and I was going to choose between I was starting to watch this or uh, Sword Art Online and I chose this just because I knew a bunch of other people who were watching Sword Art Online, didn't know anyone in my circle who had uh, ever watched Fate Zero, uh, so I figured I'd just be that different guy to watch something else that no one else was watching and it actually ended up, I'm actually glad I did watch this, it ended up being a really good um a really good watch uh, in my opinion um story centers around uh this tournament that is held and forgive me for i haven't watched this anime in a while so i have like the wikipedia page pulled up so i can give myself like little memory refreshes um but pretty much the story centers around uh they have these three families uh, the eisenberg family tosaka family and the mccare family uh, have this uh, tournament for what they compete for the Holy Grail and the Holy Grail is this kind of like omnipotent granting you know thing that everyone is after and the way the tournament works is you have seven mages who are chosen and the mages summon uh, seven heroic spirits and the spirits fight for them you know to compete for the Holy Grail um, as far as the story goes, I, I like the story. Um, I know from the way I explained it, it seems kind of basic. But when you actually watch the anime, there are subplots in there uh, without giving away too much of the story for anyone who hasn't seen it. You get a little bit of betrayal. You find people who you get to look in to see who, what reasons people want the Holy Grail for. Because like I said, it's an omnipotent you know, thing that grants wishes and... You get people who, uh, you get to find out people's different causes and different reasons why they want it. And, excuse me, the lens that some people are willing to go to, you know, to to get the grill. And like I said, there are little like subplots, sub stories that you have to follow. So uh, they, they did a good job of not making the story, you know, boring. There's plenty of going on. Uh, another thing I like about this anime is the characters. And there are a lot of them to keep up with. Uh, probably won't get into all of them but i'll stick with some of my favorites uh one of the main uh characters is uh kirisugu emiya um he's pretty much like a master assassin i think they called him like the mage killer um yeah man he, he's one of the the best characters in this anime man this he he does work throughout the whole anime he was definitely one of my favorite characters and he had some of my favorite like moments and fight scenes um also one of his main rivals was a, a guy named Kire uh Kodamine who was a priest and he and he and Kiritsugu are kind of similar in ways uh they both want the grail for different reasons but in ways like their personalities at least to me were somewhat bit of the same um and they're kind of like each other's most dangerous enemies. Kirei is also uh, a beast. I won't spoil it, but you'll you'll see the moment I'm talking about when when it happens uh, with those two. Um, as far as the uh, heroic spirits, uh, I'll just quickly name all of them uh, if I can off the top of my head. Um, Saber, who is uh, one of the main uh, recurring. Uh, heroic spirits that you see throughout the anime she's actually um she was the king of britain she was actually king arthur and i know it's a she but she like dressed like a guy and everything but it was actually uh you know she and she was um she has kind of the typical like honorable knight personality uh so to speak um some of the other heroic spirits you had gilgamesh who's very like cocky uh very just arrogant self-absorbed but he's one of the strongest characters in the anime um lancer is another uh, heroic spirit he and he and saber are somewhat similar they both have kind of that heroic like honorable knight personality uh and they actually end up not forging a friendship but they had like a mutual respect for each other throughout the series uh rider who is probably one of my favorite um characters in the anime 
uh, aka they call he called himself the King of Conquerors. Uh, he's actually shares the same story, or he is Alexander the Great, uh, pretty much. Uh, he was one of the more like free spirited characters, uh, somewhat like of a goofball at times, but still one of the strongest characters in the anime. And then the other two heroic spirits, or three actually that I haven't mentioned, uh, Caster, who's like a like crazy like serial killer, uh, Berserker, who's another one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever seen the anime Karis, but it was something about like his character design and like the way he fights that somewhat like reminded me of Karis for some reason. And then the last um, heroic spirit was Assassin. Um, pros for this anime, I would say, um, I did like the animation. The animation in this was really slick, especially during uh, some of the fight scenes. The animation is pretty good. Uh, like I said, Berserker, I love watching any scene Berserker's in because his character design to me, I just love the way they drew him. He has that like by his name his name and his character design just like match up perfectly he's very like dark evil character um and like i said his design um he has some really like crazy fight moves and things he can do that remind me so much of the Karras anime i mentioned earlier which is probably why um i liked him a lot um action sequences in here were pretty good um Another thing I mentioned is a lot of the characters, well not a lot, all of them, or at least all of the heroic spirits, uh, they have like these like ultimate attacks that they call noble phantasms, and some of the, these guys' noble phantasms are crazy. Uh, Gilgamesh's noble phantasm, he had a few of them. His noble phantasms were dope. Uh, Ryder's noble phantasm, when you finally do see it, he probably had uh, my favorite one. I won't spoil it, but uh, they did a good job of they did a good job of giving these characters, you know, they all had, these all were highly skilled. Uh, no one was, I, I, I can't say no one was stronger than the other one, because, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but, yeah, some of these dudes were probably stronger than, a lot stronger than the other ones. You'll see who I'm talking about, but, uh, anyway, fight scenes in here were good, and even, not even, um, even some fight scenes that didn't involve the, the actual heroic spirits, because they aren't the only ones who fight. You'll definitely get to see Kirei and uh, Kiritsugu get in uh, some action, and they, they definitely do their thing. Uh, Kiritsugu, man, that dude is a beast when he when you do get to see him in action. He definitely does his thing. Um, other pros? Um, I don't know. I, I got a lot of, I guess, a lot of good things. I, I, there wasn't too much like bad I could say about this anime. The only thing I could say that maybe a little bit disappointed me um there were some fight scenes and I'm not gonna mention which ones because I don't want to ruin the story but there were a, a choice few scenes between certain um uh heroic spirits that I found I don't know some of them one in particular that I won't mention by name but it was just it left me a little underwhelmed with like how it ended uh, and that that was probably one of my only like knocks on this anime. Like I felt like some of these fight scenes could have been like a little more epic because of how strong and how good like some of these characters were. But I found some of the deaths to be, uh, at least in my opinion, just a little bit underwhelming. Some of them, but for the most part, um, not much really like bad to say about this. Uh, story's pretty good all throughout. Like I said, they have the main part of the holy grail and then you got subplots of you know finding out what people want the holy grail for uh you'll get backgrounds of some characters in some episodes um so they do a good job of keeping it interesting um i like that it was actually a pretty fast watch uh, first season is only 13 episodes second season was 12 so i like binge watch this and i think i finished in like three days um and it helped that it was a good watch all the way through you know, it wasn't like I was dragging to like, oh man, I can't wait to finish this because, you know, I, I wasn't watching it just for the sake of watching it so I could finish it. Like, I actually enjoyed it the whole time I was watching this. And I think I, think I liked it so much because it was something that I, I had never heard of prior and I just kind of dived into it head first. And I liked everything, man. The action was good. The animation, uh, like I said, was good. Um, fight scenes were good. Not if you like action and anime i don't see why you wouldn't enjoy uh watching this 
Uh, they have a nice, diverse cast of characters. Um, and it was just, you know, interesting to see, like, the philosophies of uh, some of the characters uh, for why they wanted the Holy Grail. And that's another good thing about the characters is that I guess you could look at some as typical bad guys, but I guess depending on what your personal philosophy would be, you might align with certain people, even though they might be, quote-unquote, the bad guy, you know, in the anime. Um, so that was another good aspect I liked of this. Yeah, overall, I don't I don't have much bad to say about this. I rated it a 4 out of 5 on Netflix for a good reason. Uh, like I said, aside from a few underwhelming moments, at least in my opinion, in terms of some of the way uh, some of the fights ended. Um, other than that, man, I don't have much to say. Uh, or much bad to say about this. Uh, if you got Netflix you should, and you like anime, you should definitely check this out. Like I said, it's a, it's a quick run through. Uh, I think it was like 26 or 25 episodes total. If, like I said, if you binge watch this, you could finish it in a few days. And it's, it's a good finish all the way through. Not not too much filler. Um, that, yeah, that's another thing I like about It's not too much filler. Uh, I think there were like a few episodes of uh, a flashback. Uh, two episodes, I think, that were like complete flashbacks. And they were kind of filler, but even that, even those episodes actually weren't that bad. Um, looking back at it, uh, and those two, I believe, were about uh, Kiritsugu. He had two uh, like flashback episodes. And you got to see him in like his younger days and how he got, kind of became how he is. And like I said, even even those flashback episodes weren't even that bad. Uh, so yeah, overall, uh, I gave it four out of five on Netflix. I uh, would definitely recommend anyone who hasn't watched it uh, to check it out. You would definitely like some of the action in here. I'm pretty sure you'll pull away with some of these. Uh, you'll you'll definitely like some of the characters, especially the, you know the heroic spirits that get summoned. Um, so yeah, go uh, check it out, and hopefully uh, I'll keep watching some series. If anybody has a series to recommend me, I would be glad if you would leave a comment in the description, because uh, I'm always looking for new animes to watch for when I have like days off of work and I'm not doing much with my life. So <laughs> if you've got an, an anime to recommend, please drop it in the comments, and uh, I'll hopefully I'll get around to checking it out. And that's it for Base Zero, man. Definitely, uh, like I said, go go check it out if you got Netflix. And uh, until next time, I will catch y'all later.